Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a small painting tutorial on the Warriors of Dale. I've already got one of them painted up and I thought it went quite well, so I wanted to share with you uh, my technique, uh, my painting scheme, uh, or colour scheme rather. And yeah, I just want to show you what I did, how I did it, and um, hopefully you can follow it along. So this is um, <coughs> going to be a throwing spearman, or a spearman with a throwing spear. Uh, this is... Uh, these are all the parts. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of slate, which I found in the garden, uh, as on the base, just to make it look a little bit more dynamic. So the first thing we have to do is get rid of all the bits of flash and mould lines and bits of sprue that we've left on, and we're going to use a hobby knife. Uh, these are really sharp, so um, I'm sure most of you are completely fine with them, but if there's any little kids watching, uh, be extra careful with these. Uh, please don't cut yourself um, if you're really young or you know, a bit clumsy, get someone who isn't to do it for you. So we're just going to take away mould lines, we're just going to scrape them off and remove the bits of the sprue that are left on the model. Okay, so the model is all cleaned up. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this little base um, which is on the model. If I can get it to focus in here on the feet, I'm just going to clip that off um, so that I can get a smoother uh, attachment to the piece of slate. <coughs> Okay, so that's off now. Now the next thing we have to do is assemble the miniature. I'm just going to rough down the base and the bottom of the piece of slate with a bit of sandpaper um, to try and give it a little bit more of a rough surface to for the glue to stick. So I'm just going to get a small piece of sandpaper. And rough them both down. Okay, so that should make them stick together a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to stick the slate to the base with uh, super glue, and then I'm going to stick this guy together with plastic glue, and then stick him to the slate on the base with super glue. <coughs> I'll start from the bottom and work up. For now I'm going to leave the shield off so I can paint underneath where it will go uh, and then once I've painted the main part of the model I'll glue it on and then paint the shield so we'll remove that for the time being. Okay so while this guy is drying I'm going to finish off the base with a little bit of sand and small stones. Uh, I like to do this before I start painting the model because I find that if I glue on the sand and then give it an undercoat with a primer, uh, the sand stays on the base for a lot longer. Uh, it's much more securely attached because of the extra layer of um, adhesion provided by the first layer of paint. So that's what I'm going to do now. You want to use PVA glue, water it down a little bit and just literally slap it onto the base and put some dip it in some sand and stones and stuff like that I like to use this um, ballast medium brown uh, the colour is not really important but it's ballast from Woodland Scenics uh, I like to use this because you get way more for your money than you do for the stuff from Games Workshop. But it's also a pretty similar um, size and yeah, it works pretty well. Ok, 
Okay, so the base is now done. Uh, all I need to do is let the white glue dry and then we can get on to painting. Now the glue is completely dry, we can get on to priming him. I'm going to be using Citadel Skull White Spray. Uh, so I'll do that off camera and then show you when he's dry. Now the primer is all dry, we can start painting. The first layer I'm going to do is uh, Balor Brown and I'm going to go over all the cloth. I'm going to start with, well, the, the undercloth. Uh, I'm going to start with this because it's the furthest layer in, so it makes painting everything else after it easier. Um, compared to painting the outside layers first and then trying to go in to the fiddly areas that's a lot more difficult. So I'm going to use Balor Brown for the cloth. I'm going to water it down a little bit um, and I'm going to do roughly three layers. Uh, I'll do the first layer on camera and then the other two off camera. Uh, you can assume I'm doing that for all layers unless I say otherwise. Um, that's how I like to do it. I like to water it down quite a lot um, and then just keep building up the colour. I find that this uh, technique is the best way of getting even coverage without losing detail. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to water it down, paint it on, dry it off camera, redo two more layers off camera and then come back and show you how it's gone. So I'll start doing that now. So the undercloth is all done on this guy, or the first layer is at least. Uh, I'll finish this up off camera and then get back. Now that we've got a nice even coverage on all of the parts we wanted to paint, we need to give them a wash. I'm going to be using Seraphim Sepia uh, and I'm just going to layer that on over the top of the bits I've painted. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to let that dry, and then I'm going to come back and do a highlight layer. The next thing I'm going to do is give the cloth a layer of a shabti, I think that is, a shabti bone. Um, this is the highlight layer. I've watered the paint down, and I'm just going to put it on the raised areas of the cloth and the wood. That's all of it. Um, as usual, I'm going to let this dry and then do a couple more layers and get back. The next step is going to be to give some of the edges an extreme highlight of white scar. Um, this is kind of optional. Um, I just like to do it to make the areas of cloth really kind of stand out. So yeah, I'm just going to get on with it. So that just gives it a little bit more, I don't know how to describe it, I just think it makes it look a little bit better. Uh, the next thing we're going to be doing is the boots. So I'll let this layer dry up and then I'll get onto that. I'm going to be doing the boots in Rhinox Hide, uh, well that's the foundation I'm going to use anyway. Um, so yeah, let's get on with it. I need to stop saying let's get on with it. Okay, time to dry, uh, re-layer, uh, dry and re-layer again. The guy's little booties are now done. Um, I probably could say that in a more masculine way. His, uh, his manly walking boots are now complete. So I'm going to move on to the armour, the, the metal, um, what metal is it? The, well, steel armour. 
I'm not going to bother washing the boots just yet because I'm going to be washing them with black which is the same as what I'm going to do with armor so there's not really much point um, I'll just I'll just wash them all together I'm going to be using lead belcher uh, water it down three layers the standard that's the first layer of metal done um, I'll let it dry do a couple more layers and then get on to the next step the silver is now all done um, the next layer I'm going to be doing is the skin for which I'm going to use Cadian flesh tone I think that's all the skin done for now, so I'll dry it, do a couple more layers, and then move on to the next stage. I'm now going to give the skin a wash of Riken, Reikland Flesh Shade, I think that's how you say it, uh, and then I'm not going to do anything else to the skin because I find that it's a lot easier to do the, uh, particularly the face uh, at the end. Just because if you if you paint if I painted it now and then I was painting something else, I could go over it and ruin it. If I do it at the end, there's no chance of that happening. That makes a lot more sense, I think. Okay, so that's all for the skin at the moment. My next step will be to paint the fur in. Where's my color? Oh, storm vermin fur. Here we go. So the fur is just around the wrists and the knees um, and the helmet. Okay, the first layer is now completely done, so I'll let it dry, do a couple more layers, and then move on to the next stage. The next layer I'm going to do is this overcoat part, and I'm going to base that with probably Rhinox Hide again. Um, I think it's pro. Well, I think it'd look good if it was a kind of leathery material, so I think Rhinox Hide is a pretty good. Um, starting point for that. So that's the first layer of Rhinox Hide done. Um, I'll get that finished and then as always be right back. The next part I'm going to paint is the hair. Uh, this is only a tiny part and it really doesn't matter um, what colour you use uh, within reason. I think I'm going to give my guy a light brown hair so I'm going to base it with Mornfang Brown. That's literally it, uh, so I'm going to dry it off, relayer, and as always, be right back. I'm now going to give everything that hasn't already been washed, excluding anything that hasn't already been painted, with null oil.
So I think that layer or that wash is now done. So I'll let this dry off and as always be right back. I'm going to move on to highlighting the miniature. I'm going to do this all in one go. Uh, so I'll tell you the paints I'm using. Dark flesh on the tunic. Mournfang brown on the leather straps. Dawnstone on the fur. And mithril silver on all the armour. Okay, so I think most of the highlights are now done. Um, I'm going to go over it with a couple more layers, add a spot, a few spot colours, some gold to the end of the scabbard, uh, stuff like that, finish off the hair, and then I'll get back and start on the cloak. I've now completed all the highlights. Um, I did a little bit of gold on the end of the scabbard, um, gold kind of rings on these little tassels. Um, I did another highlight on the fur with just pure white um, and that's pretty much it so now I'm going to move on to this cloak which I am going to base in Caliban Green It's going to take me quite a while to um, finish this off, so I'll do the rest of it off camera. And then, as always, I'll be right back. Now the cloak is all painted up, I'm going to give it a quick wash with Bill Bile, Bile Tan Green. So that's all washed. I'll leave that to dry and then get back to highlighting it. Now that the wash is completely dry, I'm going to highlight the cloak with a one-to-one -one mix of Caliban Green and the Ancient Goblin Green. Okay, I think you get the general gist of what I'm doing here. Just picking out the uh, raised parts, or, well, with this layer, just picking out the parts that aren't in recess, or the parts that aren't... Well, you can probably see what I'm trying to do better than I can explain how to do it today. So, I'm going to finish the rest of the, this layer of highlight off camera, and uh, let it dry, maybe do another layer if it needs it and then get back. I'm now going to mix in a little bit more Goblin Green with the Caliban Green for a second highlight layer.
So that, that highlight is now done. Hopefully it'll focus in so you can see it a little bit better. I'll get this out of the way it might. There you go. Uh, the final highlight will be pure goblin green. Uh, so I'll let this dry and get back and do that. I'm now going to start the final highlight of pure goblin green just on the raised edges. So I think that will do for the final highlight. Um, I think it looks quite cool. The next thing to do is the bands along the top of the cloak which I'm going to be doing in white scar. This bit is pretty fiddly so you want to take a lot of time, be really careful. Okay, so I think you get the general gist of what I'm doing here, so as this is going to take forever and I'm probably probably going to make hundreds of mistakes, I will finish up this layer off camera and then get back to you. So I've finished up all of the white on the top of the cloak. I think it's gone pretty well, it's not perfect but it's good enough. So now we can finally get on to painting the shield. which. I need to pick up and there you go uh, so we'll need to prime this like the rest of the model and then I think I'll be painting it probably green and white like the cloak as well so I'll prime it and then get back I think the easiest way to do this will be to paint the back stick it on and then paint the front so I'm gonna do this as like a painted shield uh, so it's gonna be green and white to match the uh, cloak so I'll paint the back with Calabrian green and then I'll glue it on and paint the front. Uh, I'll dry it up and then do a few more layers and then come back and glue it on. I glued the shield on with a little bit of plastic glue uh, and give it a flat base coat of Caliban green. And now I'm going to do the detail in white scar. Sorry I couldn't do that on camera, had to take a phone call, very unprofessional of me. Uh, but I've done all the detail in white scar and I've also done the boss right in the middle. Um, that's this part of the shield um, in lead belcher and I'll give that a highlight of mithril silver. Uh, I think the model is pretty much painted now so all that's left to do is the base. I'm just going to paint the slate black and then dry brush it with... Um, lighter and lighter shades of grey uh, and I'm going to base do the sand in rhinox hide and then dry brush it with a uh, tyrant skull I think it's called so I'll do that all now and then <laughs> that'll be finished Okay, I've done the slate uh, in the base of black, so I'll dry it and then come back and finish off the base. So the first layer of black is now done, so I will give it a dry brush of, let's see, <clears throat> probably this. Um, I hope it'll focus so I don't have to say it. Oh, Mechanicus Standard Grey, that's quite an easy one. Some of the paint has chipped away a little bit when I've been dry brushing it. So I will try and be a bit more careful with the next layer. <coughs> Which is this. Celestra Grey. You could just use black and white and mix and then just keep adding white. But I'm too lazy for that. Uh, 
I'm just gonna paint over the bits that have been chipped off with um, that this celestial celestial grey. Okay, so the slate part is now done. Uh, so I'm going to move on to the sand, which I'm going to base in watered down rhinox hide. So that's dry, uh, so I'm going to give it a dry brush with, what did I say, um, Tyrant Skull, there it is, this one. So I think that part is done. <coughs> I'm going to add a little tuft of static grass, I think. So you just want to get some PVA glue and <coughs> put a little blob on where you want. Get your grass. <coughs> I'd recommend using tweezers but I don't know where mine are. So once the grass was all dry I did a layer of calthon brown on the rim and finished off the flesh and did some eyes and some teeth and stuff. So this model is now completely finished. Um, I'll finish the video with a couple of stills of it. Um, but thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. So like, comment and subscribe and um, see you in the next one.